Good morning YouTubers. Today I'm in the middle of city centre of Bradford and you may recognise where we are just off Rawson Place. Now shortly I'm going to meet uh, Mark Nicholson. He actually does a podcast for Bradford Live uh, and he will tell you quite a lot about um, the former Odeon. So check him out on uh, online. But today I'm going to meet him shortly, just around this area, and we're going to chat about a very old building that goes back around about 1815, pre-Victorian. And in our usual manner, we shall look at some illustrations, talk a bit about the history of the uh, the building, plus we shall see if we can find any stonework left. And if you're just passing by, don't be a stranger. Do check our channel out, click subscribe, like and do share. We're here to talk about a demolition story in Victorian Bradford, which for once had a happy ending. And we're currently stood on Rawson Square. And this area here was the site of a church. A church called Christ Church, which stood at the top of Derby Street. And that's the church there. Okay. And this little um, taxi rank, roughly about this very spot here. Just here, yeah. Yeah. That is where the entrance to the church was. Okay. And we have a map here dating back to those times. So you can see Darley Street as it was. And then right at the top of it was Christ Church. Okay. So if we were going back in time we would be stood roughly there. Okay. So in 1813, the foundation stone for the church was um, put into position. And I think it took a couple of years for the church to be constructed, as was the case back in those days. And um, no sooner had the church been built, the council or the corporation in its wisdom decided that it wanted to have a direct thoroughfare route from Darley Street to what was the beginning of Manningham Lane which is now the North Parade area and obviously that wasn't possible because there was this church in the way so 66 years after the foundation stone had been put into position um, we're, we're now looking at 1879 or thereabouts it was decided that the church would be demolished in order to accommodate the thoroughfare and the new Christ Church would be built elsewhere a little bit further up the road and we'll have a look at the site in a little while. So in 1879 the front page of the Bradford Observer carried an advert in advance of the demolition where building materials i.e. stone and what have you and timber which had formed the church that stood here, it was put up for sale. All right. And the only thing that wasn't put up for sale was the foundation stone. And it clearly states that here. So what we'll do is we're going to try and follow the story and see what happened to the church and uh, you know where various components and parts of it ended up. Yeah, we've, um, we've arrived at Eldon Place, which is uh, just off Manningham Lane. And it was here where the second Christ Church was built. By the look of this old map, it looks like we're stood here in the gateway of the vicarage of the new Christ Church. I've not seen many photographs of the second Christ Church, but we've got this one here. And you can see Busby's as it was in all of its splendor. And we can see two churches here. We've got one there, which is a Baptist chapel. And then just behind the more um, impressive looking structure I suppose is the second Christ Church which was like I say just on this spot so as I mentioned when we were down at the top of Darley Street earlier um, just prior to the demolition the building was basically up for sale as building materials apart from the foundation stone so in June 1879 during the demolition of the original Christ Church they found the foundation stone at the southwest angle 
of the church and under the stone was an oblong brass plate on which was engraved the information that the stone was laid in June 1813 and the plate is now in the possession of a Mr HC I think is that Wand or Ward? Ward. Ward yeah one of the church wardens of Christ Church so that was in June 1879 and a couple of months later, the 7th of August, same year, the foundation stone that laid beneath the original Christ Church was brought up here and it was placed within the foundations of the second church. What I wasn't expecting to see is this. Um, it looks like we've got a surviving piece of the second Christ Church, um, the wall under railings. This wall here? Yeah. So what happened to the church itself? Well, it continued um, with a congregation up until 1940. That's when um, services at the Second Christ Church stopped and then the congregation moved to another church just around the corner, a St Paul's Church. And in terms of the foundation stone, at this moment in time, that's where that particular part of the story ends because I don't know what happened to it, um, obviously. The church itself was demolished, I think that was in the 1960s. Um, and whatever happened to the foundation stone is anyone's guess. As we can see, there's some excavation work that's happened here because the church, by the looks of it, from the um, aerial photograph we were looking at next to Busby's, it looks like it was at, at street level. So somewhere, when all that was excavated, did they, did they just dig it up and it ended up in landfill somewhere. But that, is not the end of the actual original Christchurch story because many 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 years ago a piece of it ended up in Peel Park now this is a similar story to the other video that you guys made with the, the doorway. doorway the doorway yeah yeah that's also in Peel Park this is an old um, archive news piece and we can see a lady there taking a seat within an alcove which was created with stonework from the church down on Darley Street. Now, I'm not sure if that's still in Peel Park because I've never seen it. No. And I know our friend Andrew has been yeah. looking into that. So at some point that was there. Yeah. Once upon a time and now it isn't. And if it's there, any of our viewers have come across it. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, um, we can always do a follow up. Yeah. But even that isn't the end of the story for the original Christ Church that stood in Darley Street. And I think we'll go and see where that is. Hi Mark, you look engrossed here. What's happening? Yeah, I, do you know what? I've always loved this uh, monument here, um, dedicated to Sir Titus Salt. Um, and I still, after all this time, I just find it really hard to believe that once upon a time this was actually positioned outside City Hall. I've never done a comparison of, a, of an archive photo and the actual monument itself. Right, let's have a look. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was, in many ways, a very similar story to the, uh, you know, the reason behind the movement of the Christchurch from the city centre um, to a less prominent place because I believe that this was moved as well to improve thoroughfare in the uh, centre of Bradford. But uh, anyway, back to Christchurch. The reason we're actually here in Manningham Park is because um, although we don't know what happened to the foundation stone, huge question mark over the archway that was in Peel Park, fortunately there is more than a fragment of the original Christchurch here in uh, Manningham Park and if you just turn your camera around there it is Wow let's get a bit closer so just a bit of a backstory um, in 1882 there was a royal visit in Bradford the Prince and Princess of Wales at the time and what they did in Bradford is at various points throughout the city um, they constructed a number of arches out of wooden canvas 
and a replica Norman arch was built here on this corner and the following year in 1883 it was decided that it looked so good to have an arch here that they decided to construct a permanent landmark which is what we still have now from what I understand a regular Norman arch an authentic Norman arch would have had one smaller arch at the side of it but the city architect at the time had a thing for symmetry so he decided to add another right let's get a bit closer and have a look can you read just what it says on there john hill i can't read that it difficult. looks like that yeah yeah it's actually first time I'm inside the arch and I drive past it every day more or less so just to um, add a further a little bit of backstory to this so going back a few years before the royal visit in 1882 we'll go back to 1879 when the Christchurch at Dallas Street was being demolished and we saw the advert earlier on the front page advert putting building materials up for sale and there was a news piece in the um, local observer we've got it here and it said that originally it was advertised to be sold in one lot but they actually split it down into 12 lots um, there was gas piping stone and woodwork the grand total for all of the building materials it was uh, £251 and the stonework itself was sold for £150 and for a, a number of years whoever bought it they kept it in storage somewhere I don't know if, for what reason but fortunately there was the foresight to recycle it we've got a piece here again from the local observer 1883 and it mentions here that they were going to build a permanent Norman arch on this site and it states within this piece the work will be carried out in stone almost the whole of which once formed part of the fabric of old Christchurch Darley Street and it is the gift of Mr George Poole what a wonderful gift and what a wonderful everlasting monument we have right let's have another look I'll tell you what else I find quite impressive about this little story here you know we're talking about Victorian Bradford and we seem to think that recycling is a 1980s 1990s sort of thing but you know this is recycling at its very very best and this corner of Manningham Park it seems to be almost like a final resting place for things which once existed in the city centre and who knows in 10, 20 years time, after they've pulled down the Kurgate Centre, are we going to see a huge piece of concrete over there in that corner? Who knows? Watch this space. Mark, it's been a pleasure. As always, mate, as always. Thank, thanks for digging out all this information. I mean, like I said earlier on, our channel, channel's about digging out all history that's not even in the mainstream. And these are important, you know, episodes of Bradford history. I mean, how many people drive past this without knowing what it is? Yeah. 
a piece of a genuine piece of old Bradford that's been hiding in plain sight for over a hundred years. Wonderful. Yeah. So guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Do follow us, share, subscribe and peace out from Norman Arch.